Well, leaving Mohawk in the rain, heading back home. You know, anytime you have one in and you make a break, it's it's not good, obviously. But I just this is like two, maybe three weeks in a row. This horse had to race on a hard, hard, hard track. And when you have horses, you know, horses aren't stupid. When you know that you can't catch up, now it's working. Uh, when you know that you can't catch up as a horse, and, and as a driver, you can ask, but horses know. It's it's a very frustrating feeling for a lot of horses. You know, tonight, Resolute Bay was trotting the exact same as he was the night he was six, second or third that first week, but he was in the hunt. You know, the fractions were fair, a little fresh. You know, he was coming off cover. He was finishing well. Not in the hunt tonight with a quarter and 27 or so. No, it was, might have been more than that, 128. It was at least 27 a piece. With a quarter like that to try and catch up to, it's just, it's, it's hard to do. You know, we talk about all the time, I talk about all the time, you know, a lot of the times in the summer, get the money when you can. Because they don't give it away in this game. And, you know, we all want to... Resolute Bay was racing so good and got a little tired. We turned him out. He said, we'll just have him ready for that series. And I told everybody, be careful what you wish for. Because all those series are tough. Those are good horses. Very good horses. And the, the, the thing that makes Resolute Bay such a good horse for us is because we've seen him since he was a baby. A prospect two-year-old. Graduate from an okay grassroots horse to a pretty good, to a really good grassroots horse to just a really good horse. And the thing that makes him so good is, is is resiliency and his toughness. But I can assure you, if we keep bracing him in where he's going to get his head beat in, because he will in there, you will see that resi resiliency dissipate quite quickly and regress. And that's not a dig on anyone. There is nowhere else to race this horse. Nowhere. Too much money made. Nothing waiting for him but, but you know, heavyweights. So... Um, I don't know what he has on his program now. That'll be up to Harry. But honestly, I would just assume not even race him in the final. I'd rather race him against lesser company if he could drop down. But I don't I don't even know if he can, to be honest. And I know there's a lot of people out there saying, but they're going to race for like 80000 Who cares if you can't get any of it? And, you know, when the one thing that I always say, it's the easiest thing in the world. Just try to go on the track as a, as a competitive horse. Try to go on the track. 4-1, 3-1, 8-5, 9-5. to, one, three to, one, eight to five, nine to five. When you're heading on the track every week at 15 or 20-1, to one, you are in the wrong class. And again, that's not an admonishment of anything, any horse, anybody. It's just the predicament we find ourselves in with Resolute Bay. And hopefully we can reverse it. I'll tell you what, Renegade Gypsy's a very smart horse. He got that little virus before the qualifications and we decided to skip the series. And maybe just in case we had any aspirations of starting him, Got a little splint. Um, so he pushed him back to the after the series. Yeah, listen, Resolute Bay's tough. He'll bounce back. As long as we manage him in a way to bounce back. I don't think there's anything I could do different. It's not like I asked him. I even moved him over to a place in the track where he felt comfortable. Almost like a thoroughbred where he felt comfortable. And I said, I might beat Paul McDonnell, but it's unlikely. Halfway down the lane. He was trotting okay, but I could feel him get a little wobbly, get a little pacey. There's nothing you can do at that point. You grab him up, he's going to pace. Chase him, he's going to pace. All you can do is hope that he catches his breath and trots through the wire. I told you guys tonight that he got 26-3. and three. He was right on the edge of pacing. Well, throw in two more starts on a concrete track, and voila, you end up with a break. So nothing that happened tonight can't be, can't be fixed. Um, and hopefully we can start getting him in where he can be a little more effective um, and the only reason he, he can't win somewhere is because he's paid too much money the last five so so hopefully he can start to drop down and, and do some good you know he's such a nice little horse and, and he just tries his heart out you know I thought it'd be clever tonight I said well Chris Christopher's horse can't leave Bob McClure's horse shows brakes can't leave geez I might be able to drop myself into a three hole maybe a two hole if I'm really lucky going out of there I look left first horse coming out of the gate was Chris Christopher's horse <laughs> so what? Anyway, the horse raced as good as he could. Earlier on today, we saw Austral Hanover uh, race, and I had a message from one of our one of my partners on the horse saying, oh, he looked a little flat. No, that horse that won that race is a sire stake horse in Ohio, and a good one. And a lot of the horses in that 
class today. Pretty salty bunch of horses. I think Mike Wilder did us a favor racing him the way he did. I was really hoping he didn't come first over with him, and he didn't. You know, he'd said to Tim after, ah, maybe I should have moved him. No, he shouldn't have. He did the right thing, and thank you for that. Austral Hanover will come back. Good. That's a mile 155 and a piece today in the mud. Second start back as a three-year-old. Um, in, with some, in with some tough horses. And I said to Tim, uh, he scoped good, a little bit of mucus. Uh, Tim's going to draw his blood tomorrow. I don't expect to find a whole lot in his blood. And maybe, you know, uh, if Mike has a better feeling from him next week, put him in play if you want. But again, I appreciate the fact that he's racing him conservatively. His first stake is June the 3rd in the Stallion Series in the Meadows and certainly is not uh, embarrassing himself on the way there. As I said, I thought the horse raced well. We all just have to... Uh, understand that everybody has nice horses and everybody wants to see their horses do good and everybody's just like us. So whether it's Resolute Bay in a tough bunch today or kind of a deeper part of the pool than, than Austral's used to being in, you have to understand that those are all good horses that those horses raced against today. Resolute Bay and Austral Hanover and both of them did very, very well just to do the race. And I know Resolute Run, just pitch it out. You guys know what happened. You know, rock hard track, got a little, got a little, um, Probably a little disgruntled as he couldn't make up any ground down the lane and, and just overtrotted himself. Happens. So uh, with that, we're going to draw to a close a rainy, uh, not a very good night, but a rainy night here in Ontario. Aside from that, I, it would have taken a whole lot more than a break from Resolute Bay and a fifth place finish from Austral Hanover to put dampers on the day that we had. The babies were great. The, the babies were great. The trainers were great, the schoolers were great, and of course the qualifiers were really happy for James. I went back and watched the video. His horse looked great today. Uh, happy for all my partners on Crantini. That's an A+. Plus. That is a Crantini A+, plus right there. You're not going to get much better than that right now. And if I was to say all the miles he's gone in his life, although this one was for no money, was his best work yet. I, 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 believe, that, I believe that to be true. Um... The qualifier from Spitfire. Now, obviously, I'm talking about some of our heavy hitters, but he doesn't want to. Uh, the qualifier from Spitfire was was top shelf too. Uh, I think he's now he's ready to rock. I think you're going to see him in a qualifier next week look great, and I think we'll just follow that up with a with a second qualifier because we have kind of a log jam in that numbers of three, and we will. I had a, a wonderful email. I love that our clients are on top of. I make mistakes sometimes, and over the last couple of weeks, Ray has has picked up a couple of them. And corrected me. Uh, one really wasn't my fault. The, the calendar was wrong uh, for Joanne staking, and Ray picked up on that. So thank you for that. Uh, we can maybe change our, our thought process because of that. And also, uh, a wonderful tidbit today told us that there's only 28 horses entered to the Battle of Bunker Hill. Uh, I say a lot of people are in the same position we are. I think. Uh, if we do a little deeper dive on this to see which horses are actually ready and likely to come, we might end up finding that there's only one or two divisions max of this Bunker Hill. They're going to go for 100000 I assume, plus, um, plus the nominating money. Usually that's how these stakes work. Um, so I would suspect we're going to race for somewhere around... Uh, 110,000 split by however many, one division or two. I don't think it'd be three. Um, and I would suspect that it'd be a good staging point, especially since a week later is the PA All-Stars. Probably a good staging point for uh, Carter, Michael, Dio, and Spitfire. Now, I don't want to undo all the hard work we've put into Crantini by showing him a different look in a different place on a 5 8 mile track, even though he's trained great at first line. Um, let's see how he does next week. Uh, well, as I say that, let's see how Carter Michael Dio does on Monday. Spitfire Overseas does on Friday. All There's a lot. This is still a very fluid situation, but that is very, very much still a possibility that um, a couple of these horses end up at the Battle of Bunker Hill on Plain, at Plain Ridge Race Course on, it would be the 15th, I believe, the 15th of May. So we'll see how that plays out. But uh, as I said, a great day today. Very happy with everybody that went down. I'm just trying to think of everybody that went. And they're right here. Um, just to reiterate, my 1% will likely school next week. How the hell will likely school next week, I suppose? Uh, Cunning Connie will qualify. I don't know what James will do with Hasty Bid. Likely requalify him once. Uh, nothing but a dreamer. I suspect he'll requalify him another time. Absolute euphoria. We'll go to school mode with this filly. She's qualified now, but she is not ready to race yet. 
trust me when I tell you, she's probably ready to pay some 53 if we just get all the wrinkles, not one. And there's not lameness I'm talking about. There's a number of things. I think maybe a component of hers are feet. Uh, those hind ankles were bothering her last week. We had them injected. You can't just inject them and poof, they magically disappear. So we're going to start working on those ankles and her front feet and all the secondary issues that might come from that. But I think she's going to go into school mode for the next couple of weeks. Um, Sintro, I suspect Harry will put in to go next week. Crantini will be entered into go next week. Now that will be a week from this Monday in the same class as Crantini and... Uh, unbeatable Kemp um, Spitfire Overseas will be in the qualify Fish will be in the qualify and I suspect Merchant Man will also so that was our day in a nutshell so with that I'm going to let you go of we'll all your videos brought to you next week or tomorrow for, for the week that was uh, lots to talk about um, and a lot of good not a lot of bad a lot of good to talk about so we'll get to that tomorrow looks like it's going to rain all day so lots of times to get lots of time to get your videos done tomorrow so with that I'm going to take the rest of the night off you go ahead and take the rest of the night off too take care